So let me start off this review by thanking Alan from the Library of Alan Zandria because I think I found a new favorite writer. Welcome back to StoryTube, everybody. As you can see by the title of this video, I'm going to talk about Sen on the Sands. I just read it. We are continuing into the month of Alan, and I started the Books of Babel, and I really, really loved it. So I've been feeling a little bit of fantasy burnout lately, at least for traditional fantasy, big epic slogs. And this book absolutely cured me of that. I think Senlin is a wonderfully paced little thriller of a book. And also the really engaging cast of characters and the really unique prose that he has here. I think Josiah Bancroft is one of the best writers of prose in fantasy that I've discovered in the last couple of years. And I'm just really, really grateful to have read this book. And I want to talk a little bit more about why that is. So, I'm not going to keep holding it up. But if you want to know a little bit more about Senlin the Sands, it is about a headmaster called Thomas Senlin, who is on honeymoon with his wife. They are from the country of Ur, and they travel to the Tower of Babel. Aside from those minor obvious references to the Bible. It doesn't really go much further than that. But anyway, they arrive at the Tower of Babel and Thomas Senlin's wife Maria gets swept away in the crowd and he loses her. And he must ascend the tower to find out where she is, what happened to her, to retrieve her, to rescue her or to just see what she's doing. I don't want to say too much more about this book. There's plenty of reviews on YouTube that you can watch that will tell you all about this book and chats and discussions. Um, but I think the beauty of this book is going in not knowing anything at all. If you are in the mood for traditional fantasy, this is not it. If you are in the mood for steampunk action fantasy, this is also not that. This is steampunk mystery thriller, I think. I, I find it hard to compare this book structurally, pacing-wise, writing-wise, to most other fantasy that I've read. And because I've read a lot of fantasy lately, I'm feeling a little burnout, at least for the traditional structure, traditionally structured story, this just hit me at the right time. So, like, recency bias aside, I'm tr I've been trying to think about this a little bit objectively as well. So I've been sitting on the review for a while, but I think this might be one of my favorite books of the year, if not one of my favorite books of the last couple of years. And mainly that is due to Josiah Bancroft's prose. And there is such a balance of everything in this book, from the beautiful prose, the rich characters, the thriller-like pacing of the plot. It is a plot-driven book, but it is so entertaining and so mysterious. It's just a compelling page turner. Bancroft also has this way of once we start ascending the tower, even when we're at the bottom on the, on, on the outskirts of the bottom of the tower and once we enter through the basement and we, we start ascending the levels, Bancroft has a way of introducing characters. His, the way he introduces characters, you immediately form your impression of those characters with, within one line. And he's so efficient with this. It's almost like reading a screenplay at times when he's introducing a character. But that doesn't mean that it lacks for poetry and for flowery, verbose language. So when he is introducing a character, he does have a screenplay-like efficiency that can be punchy, but it also doesn't lack for that poetry. So it makes it both practical and beautiful at the same time. You immediately get an image of each character that he introduces. It's such a colorful cast of characters in this book. And one example of this that was just a perfect way of introducing a character, I think the line was, let me check. I think the line was, she spoke with the urgency of a burst pipe. This is wonderful. That is just a marvelous way of telling you exactly who this character is, but giving you that first impression of their personality. And I think w as we ascend the tower with Senlin, Bancroft does this great thing of using the structure of the tower itself to structure the book and structure the information 
reveals and the information drip feed that he gives us about the characters, about the circumstances and about Senlin himself. So, of course, each level, we, we only travel to three levels of the tower in this in this book. And I'm not going to really give too, too many details or spoilers or anything like that. But each level in this tower is essentially like a mini city itself with its own mini society. And they are all distinct enough from each other so that each part or section of the book feels almost like a new setting. And it's just wonderful. And Bancroft does this amazing thing of with each layer you go to, he reveals new information or he just recontextualizes information you've already learned. So you're reframing things. You're constantly shifting that first impression that you get. Even though that first impression was always really strong. And, and I, mean, I mean in terms of the characters in that sense. But also with the circumstances. And things that you think you know within the first 50 pages will change after 100 pages. Will change after 200 pages. Or just be reframed slightly twisting the the lens a little bit and Bancroft does this so so well so underneath the mysterious setting and the tight pacing and the page turny intrigue there is a story here about friendship about love about commitment about taking risks to grow in life it's also about greed and excess and capitalism honestly and how society structures itself in a way that the powerful step on the weak and the tower is just a wonderful symbolic structure to convey all of these things that are underneath the surface to me but through all the through some beautiful prose i think bancroft really gets this these themes across to me but what the real strength of this book is that that stuff is there, but you don't need to have it or you don't need to see it to really enjoy this book because underneath all of that is just a really, really entertaining book. And I think the more excess we get in the tower, the more levels of power and tyranny that we see within these mini societies, we're just ultimately learning to appreciate the little things, to appreciate the human things, to appreciate trust in other people. And I think Senlin goes on a bit of a journey up the tower from an arrogant kind of know-it-all who he arrives at this tower thinking he knows everything because he's he reads a lot of books, but in practical everyday experience, he has very little or knows very little. And I think he sort of becomes less arrogant as as the book goes on. So I can understand people also not really vibing with Senlin at the beginning, but I think that's the point. He's naive, he's arrogant. And obviously as we the reader learn these new bits of information or recontextualize the same information that we have, Senlin is doing the same thing. So Bancroft is constantly teaching Sen something else while teaching us something. This book is written in the third person, but sometimes it almost feels like it should be a first person book. However, I think it's cool that he chose third person because we form our own biases, opinions, and prejudgments of things different to Senlin, but then we read about Senlin's own prejudices and assumptions. So it's a nice little balance that you're reading it going, Senlin, don't do that, that's dumb. And then he'll do something else and you're reacting to both. You're reacting to Bancroft revealing information and reacting to Senlin reacting to that information. And I just found this utterly compelling. It's also just about like finding a balance to things. So I, I mentioned that excess and I think not just in terms of materialistic things or in terms of power, but just finding a balance within yourself, if that makes sense. Senlin obviously learns to take more risks, to become more confident, even though he is 
intellectually confident. I don't think he's confident in like outward practice or, or dealing with people or building trust with people. So it's about finding that balance. And I think there's a lot of layers to that. Just like there's layers in the tower. Again, the tower is is a nice bit of simple symbolism for a lot of these things that Bancroft is, is putting into this book. But again, because I see these things in the book, if you don't see them or if you're reading the book and you're just enjoying it for the pure adventure and swashbuckling fun and rich characters and mysterious plot, that's also the purpose of the book. I just found that Bancroft found a perfect balance between maybe trying to say something with the book, but also making it pure entertainment, which at the end of the day is all we really want when we read a book. This is just a th thrilling ride. There is every fun element that you could possibly conceive of in this book. There is conspiracy, there is mystery, there is organized crime, there is swashbuckling fun, there is pirates, there is machines, there is people with metal arms, there is a heist, uh, there are colorful characters. It's just riddled with great entertainment. And like I've mentioned a couple of times, it's just anchored by a really, really vivid cast of side characters. Every single character that's introduced in this is fully realized. You really see them as people, as human beings, as this is somebody that I can picture, even though some people might have magic red hands or metal arms or whatever. Every single character is fully human and far more complex than we we realize when we first meet them. Bancroft is constantly challenging our biases as we learn new things about the characters. So I think that's another reason why he didn't choose to do this in first person. So again, we separate our biases about the people that Senlin meets from the biases that Senlin has. It's constantly adding to the mystery as well. So the mystery about the people, the mystery about the situation and the mystery about where his wife Maria is, there's just constantly something to keep you turning the pages here. I've seen now after finishing the book some complaints and criticisms about the book being boring and honestly I don't really get that at all. I try to see things from other perspectives all the time but I don't really get how this book could be boring. I guess it's light on action but to me, action is often boring if there is no underlying character or intrigue or why should I care about this situation? And like I said, the inherent structure of going up the tower and ascending to each new level gives this book such a tight structure and Bancroft builds it almost as well as some of the best comics writers build issues and arcs in runs. So like comics are usually structured in a way that a single issue, which is about 24 pages, has an A plot, a B plot and a C plot. And the A plot will usually just set things in motion. The B plot will be underlying. And then by the end, the C plot is like a twist that happens at the end of an issue or a reveal of information that then later becomes the A plot of the next issue or the next chapter. And then arcs are usually between five and six issues and they are structured in the same way. And then runs are maybe five arcs. So that kind of structure builds out and there's layers and blocks put on top of each other. And I think Bancroft I don't know if he's written comics before, but I feel like he structured this book in that way. So it's just supremely easy to read. And if none of this convinces you to pick up the book, I'm just gonna tell you one thing about it. There is a scene with a woman with a metal arm wearing a long coat, a great coat with like flaps and stuff and big pockets, who swings off a flying ship screaming long live fashion. If that doesn't make you wanna read this book and if that doesn't make this book fun, I don't know what will. So that's it to be honest.
Anyway, I just wanted to give my brief non-spoiler thoughts on Sen on Ascends as I finished it just a couple days ago. I'm going to continue on now with the other reads that I have planned for the month. I'm currently into Augustus by John Williams. <laughs> And I started The Company by KJ Parker. So, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, like the video if you like my thoughts. Comment down below if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. If you thought Sand on the Sands was boring, tell me why. I want to understand. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time.